Sunday morning, eight o'clock. I'd rather be tucked up in bed, but I'm going out on a Sunday group ride. It's about two or three degrees, pretty cold. Um, the bike is all in the car, ready to go. And yes, a tarmac does fit in an Audi A1, just about, if you know how to put it in. And this video is about low temperatures and how it affects the speed at which you, at which you ride. And I think you'd be quite surprised at just what a big effect it has on, on how fast you can ride or how much power you need to ride at a given, at a given speed. So uh, yeah, we'll be looking at that. And um, now it's time to get pedaling and get this bike ride done. So there we go. The, the ride's over. Felt tough today. It was cold out there, uh, high pressure, and a headwind as well, easterly headwind. Everyone was uh, taking it easy, not pushing too hard. Uh, winter's here, so it's just a question of uh, pedaling away nice and easy, staying fit, staying warm, and um, getting home for a nice cup of tea. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna just uh, put some figures in and see exactly how much difference it really makes to, to ride in the cold. better nice cup of tea fully refreshed and um, yeah so what is it that restrains us as you're going through the air well we can look at our old friend the um, the drag formula and we can see that in there the air density is is one of the factors and air density can vary pretty much from about 1 to 1.3 and as the air density increases it just basically means that it's that much harder to push through the air it becomes a more a thicker more difficult medium to push through so um, if you have a high temperature low pressure day um, like 30 degrees and, uh, and low pressure then you're going to get a density um, down in the sort of one range and if you have a cold day high pressure then the density is going to go up to about the 1.3 range so if we um, if we put these figures into the equation um, and if you want to ride at 40 kilometers an hour then what actually pops out is that you need 266 watts to do it on the on the cold day and 208 on the on the warm day so you can see there's a really big difference there you need an extra 50 watts um, 50 60 watts even to maintain that kind of that kind of speed another way to express it is would be to say uh, how much um, if I'm developing 250 watts how fast will I go now on the on the warm day you're looking at 42.6 kilometers an hour and on the on the cold day only 39.3 so again a, a really big difference um, and you know that's why basically if you're wondering why You've been riding slow in the winter. That's that's the main reason. Um, it's pressure and temperature related. Also humidity a little bit, but that's fairly minor. Um, and also the other factor is, is, you know, in the winter you're wearing much bulkier clothes like these, and that increases your not only your surface area but also your drag coefficient. So it becomes actually that much worse still. Um, so yeah, you know, it makes uh, makes a big effect and. If you want a KOM hunting tip, uh, if you're looking to, uh, to do well on a local segment, then you're basically uh, better off waiting for a day that's uh, very warm and low pressure. I mean, this is why Badly Wiggins, when he did his hour record, he was hoping for the lowest pressure day that he could get and, uh, and the velodrome was, was heated. So yeah, there we go. That's the, uh, that's the main reasons for slower riding in the winter.